what is going on savage here today we're going to be diving in and breaking down some random quads gameplay now quads is my favorite game type to analyze and break down because i truly believe that if you can master quads trios duos and solos come super easy quads is one of those game types that puts you in a position to be possibly fighting four eight or even 12 enemies at any given time and in my opinion it's one of the most stressful game types there is because it really requires you to be able to have good positioning and rotate yourself out of bad position should you be stuck in some unfortunate situation but if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel join the wolf pack today also leave a like on the video let's get this video to 1000 likes and as always if y'all are tired of playing by yourself join our discord community and utilize the looking for groups page to find some other people to play with and get some w's we've got a lot of people who have found permanent teammates and they're constantly getting wins using the discord so i love to see that also i am now a facebook partner so make sure you follow me over on facebook the link to that will be in the description below but without further ado let's go ahead and dive into the video all right here we are spectating a quad zero sade i know i screwed that name up because that makes no damn sense but anyway we're in quarry i love quarry I love Corey. It's my favorite spot to be. Um, there's a huge section, huge cluster of bounties. There are four bounties on top of each other and a search objective. If you look at the mini map, there's one search, there's three bounties. And then of course, the one they picked up was also sitting there. If you're early game and there's a search objective near you and there's bounty near you as well, pick up the search. You need to get your money, you need to get your loadout, you need to get your teammates back so that you can, after that, pick up a bounty and go fight somebody, but be fully geared up and ready to go. So I don't like the fact they grab the bounty right off the dump. I mean, if there's nothing else around you and you want to fight some people with some standard weapons, that's fine. I'm never against getting bounties, but there's the search objective. You definitely want to go ahead and get that scav right off the bat because I'd rather be fighting the enemy with my Kilo and my AX-50 and my MP5 than using these basic weapons. Unfortunately, okay, let's talk about teamwork. So when it comes to teamwork, we have a bounty marked, right? We know there's enemies there and y'all have been peeking enemies, but unfortunately y'all are super separated. So again, there's no rush to kill a bounty. You have two and a half minutes. So what these two guys should have done, what purple and yellow should have done is one cluster together, group up and allow us to come to them. The fact that Tan Man literally dove into a 1v whatever by himself, I'm not surprised he got shit on. And then with saying that, now I have a feeling Chubby's gonna do the exact same thing and probably face the same death. And then after that, I think we're up next. And again, especially in a position where they're all in one building, they're all clustered together. If you guys sync yourselves properly and one guy went in from the top, one guy came in from the bottom, one guy came in from the staircase, y'all could essentially pinch the enemy. C4 doesn't work the way it used to, but I love the fact that he window jumped to try to get to better position. But again, picking you off one at a time because y'all didn't sync yourselves properly. But we did come up from a whole different angle, which put us in a position to go ahead and get some knocks. I don't like the fact that he left hard cover to finish the last guy. You know, the slide canceling and all that ADS and getting some hits look pretty and all. But at the end of the day, why didn't we just utilize that wall that we were just at? This wall right here. Why didn't we just utilize that wall and shoot at the enemy who had very little cover, right? Instead, we decided to push up because why? Because we got it down and we were afraid he's going to get the res off. But unfortunately, now he's going to get the res off and... You're dead. And that just comes down to decision making, guys. You cannot put yourself in a horrible position just because you got a knock. We talked about this a few videos ago, and I'm glad we're spectating it this one because it's really, really showing you guys exactly what I mean by that. You know, call this squad what you will, campers or whatnot, but they played it right. They had a bounty on them. They stayed clustered together. They were watching different angles. And I love the fact that the guy we were spectating, when he did push in, not only was he having to shoot the guy who was in front of him, right next to the guy head down, but their other teammate was on the wall behind us sitting in the corner. So even if we would have won that fight, his teammate would have shot us in the back. So again, even though they kind of were camping, they had a bounty on them. So I'm not going to hold them to that. You got to do what you got to do to win the game. And I love this. So these guys are clearly, these guys went for money. These guys went for scavs. These guys went for something because they're sitting, well, they were sitting on almost $30,000. So we were able to buy our teammate back, get our loadout, and we're still sitting on $21,000. So we're sitting really pretty. And again, this is why I always say if there's a search objective near you, go for that first if you need money. Because again, I would rather go up against people with my real guns than going against them with basic bitch weapons. Um, this is also an opportunity since we were all by the buy station, even if you even if Zona didn't want to buy anything, because he well, he's got everything minus self-res, he still should have dropped his money and allowed his teammates to buy something or vice versa. But now I love that we, you know, we got our, we got everything we need. We got our loadout. We got plates. We got dead silence. We got cluster strikes. And we're going to go ahead and grab a bounty and push in. That's exactly what you should do. Don't overstay your welcome. They looted. They got some kills. Now they're moving out. 
That's not me. I don't I don't know what the hell's happening right now. I don't know. Poop goes down. I have no idea why. Unfortunately, we switched players. Uh, before we can see what's actually going on, that's very unfortunate. So now again, we're in a position where purple's lagging behind. I understand he came back from the gulag. We had to get him back. I get that. But we should have waited for all of our teammates to have the loadouts and push together because again, we're pushing a bounty just like the last team we spectated. And the last thing you want to do is run in one at a time. As players, when we're playing duos, trios, and quads, we have got to get out of our head to compete with our own teammates for kills. I don't care if my teammates drop 40 kills and I drop one kill that game. If I did my job, if I pinged all my enemies, we got the win, I got crucial knocks with my sniper rifle, I'm happy. You know, I mean, granted, I want more kills, but I'm happy with that. The last thing you want to do as a player, and this happens to every squad, is try to compete with yourself. Be like, look how many kills I got. Dude, Brad down there got one kill. What a bitch. No, dude, you're the same team. You guys need to start operating the same way, start working together, because this is what happens when you guys try to compete with the with your team. You already have to compete with the enemy. You have 150 players to compete with. Why would you compete with your team? It makes no damn sense. So now again, picking us off one by one. This is what you need to avoid. Guys, teamwork is crucial. Stop competing with each other. Unfortunately, I'm not sure of the situation that's happening right now. The bounty's clearly dead. But we didn't get a team wipe, right? We didn't get a team wipe. So I knew that the teammates were close by. How many? We don't know. But with saying that, again, it would be a better option to clear the building somewhat together. You don't want to be holding pockets. You don't have to be up each other's asses. But you want to be relatively close together. So if you get in combat and you give that instant call out, your teammate's right around the corner. He can come right and help you, right? Right, we have footsteps above us, so we definitely have more than one enemy. I would assume two, at least. We know there's this guy here, and then the guy that killed the last guy we were spectating. So there's two, and then, of course, the uh, the UAV is giving us two pings. So there's two more enemies left. Um, in this position here, this ping is clearly outside. He's clearly going to be right around the corner when you wrap around. And then we have this guy that's inside as well. So I would kind of play inside the building. The reason why I wouldn't play on the outside of the building is because there are doorways and holes and windows above us so they could jump out of and sh or shoot down on us from and you don't want to put yourself in a position to have to fight a guy who's on the outside and his teammate come up from above you and start shooting down on you guys so i would play the inside of the building knowing that one of their teammates is on the outside okay he did work his way inside but again we're in a situation now it's close quarter you guys want to use the mp7 to your to your best of your ability I'm sorry, not the MP7, the MP5. You want to use your SMG in close quarter situation. You do not want to sit there with your VLK to M4 and try to outshoot a shotgun, um, an MP7, an MP5, because unless you hit all of your headshots, unless you're that kind of player, you're going to lose the fight. The right weapon for the right fight, guys. Close range weapons, you should never have your AR out, ever. I mean, unless you're rocking an AR and a sniper rifle, then in that position, you're, you're kind of, it is what it is. But if you have an SMG, utilize the SMG to your advantage. So here we are now. Zona jump right back in on his loot. I'm not sure what his plan is. This is not a play sitting on a rooftop because you have all of you have all of Corey looking right at you. Crouch walking is never the play, guys. You're better off sprinting down these stairs, slide canceling, grabbing your loot, running the corner, than walking down slowly. Because if they are sitting there holding that angle, faster movement, harder to shoot. Slower movement, you're dead. Yeah, we still hear him here. It sounds like the enemy might be on the roof, to be honest. Also, we've wasted so much time that their teammates are probably back by now. Either they won their gulag or they've been bought back by one of their teammates. We know there's somebody here. We do. And then we've got to move out in a minute and a half. So there's a huge probability that even if we do get our shit, they're going to gatekeep us. All right, they know we're here. They're throwing stuns and shit. There's a guy on the mountain gatekeeping us. It might be the teammate. It might not. I'm not really sure. But again, because we did come back in and again, because the announcer did or does notify every enemy team around you that you're coming back in, they, they know you're here. There's, there's no stealthiness about this. Your best plays are running around and try to get some picks. Laying prone, sitting here, waiting for the two guys, the three guys, or four guys to collapse on you is just dumb. Not to mention, the longer we wait, the more time gas has to push us out. And then guess what? We're dead no matter what. 
we are possibly facing a 1v4 scenario. So you want to run the, around this building, utilize the building's layout to get some picks off. You can pick one enemy at a time, just like they did your team. But instead, we're sitting here just allowing them to cluster up, allowing them to get to that hill to gatekeep us. I was not a fan of this at all. This is not the play. It's not the play. Not to mention, we have the guy on the hill, so we should be utilizing all these open doorways. There's two doorways up top, one on each side, where you could utilize the peak and get some shots off on the guys who just shot at us on the hill. Um, not only that, the second floor, there's a bunch of windows. You can do the same thing and some doorways. And not to mention, utilize the bottom floor to round around the building and get some shots off as well. Sitting here, just praying to God you're be able to run across the wide open field. Very slim. All right, not to mention we do have we do have a cluster strike. So these guys are on the hill. We didn't take our time to we didn't utilize our time to try to get some downs and then push across at all. We just kind of sat in the building staring at everything that that was on the wall. Um, but we do have a cluster strike, so we need to launch the cluster strike at the hill to kind of distract them. It's our only it's our only safe bet. There's an enemy right there, and of course they're gonna be rotating in as well. Um, the the odds of them. I'm glad he used it. The odds of them bailing from the fight are slim to none. You're a free kill at that point, so you need to utilize your cluster strike to create a distraction and get them pushed away from the from the edge. All right, so here we are now with twenty six hundred dollars. We need to get money to get our teammate back. There's the most one bounty here. I'm definitely not against him taking shots because if you're able to get the kill, the chance of him having money, you know, it, it's 50 50 So you might be able to get some money back to get another teammate. So here we are now with $2,600 moving out, trying to move to the next circle, which is further south. Supply run is great in this option. I'm glad that he picked it. It's your best bet right now. You'll be able to get a teammate back for free. The only downside to it is you're going to have to go there to pick it up, and then it's going to direct you to a buy station that's probably pretty far away. Um, and because we are mid-game, the chance of the buy station having people around it is pretty likely. So you got to be able to get in and get out quickly. Oh, you got a you got a squad coming down after you, brother. Hopefully he's a good shot with the sniper rifle, able to get a hit off. I love it, brother. Oh, driving straight. I love it. That's unfortunate. What the hell? Why did you jump off the vehicle? Wait, is there there's is there a dude on there? It's a floating head driving an ATV. This game, bro. This game. I swear, bro. All right, so what the teammate's doing right now is trying to get a better angle on you. As you're distracted with getting the shot off on this guy, he's going to wrap around never, ever slow peak ever. That's why he died. Um, he's going to try to get by the, the windmill and try to get some shots off on us. So we need to avoid stepping out right here because, again, his teammate just drove here. We know he did because there's the vehicle. He jumped out of the vehicle. La -da -da, he's right there. That's not pretty self-explanatory. And now we have two teammates that are going to get the res offs. I'm not a fan of this at all. Even if you get those three knocks down there, they're going to keep resing each other over and over and over. And then again, you still have to worry about homeboy that got by the windmill. Again, you mark the supply run. You need to go for it. You need to know when to bail from fights. You're in a 1v4 right now. You might get some picks. Cool. You may get a kill. But at the end of the day, you want to get your teammate back and you want to go ahead and do it quickly. I have a bad feeling he's going to put himself out of position trying to get this to execute. I really feel like he's, that's exactly what he's going to do. Oh, he's already up. And again, right now, you know, I'm not against picking fights, but because it's such an impossible fight to pick, that I would definitely recommend just going ahead, getting out of there, and getting the supply drop. Here comes a four-lit coming right at you now. You've already pissed off every enemy, and that's exactly what they're doing. So now, the enemy team split up again. Clearly, the enemy bailed off right in front of us. He's going to have a great angle on us. And meanwhile, while we're trying to challenge him, his team's to our right, so they have a perfect pinching opportunity. And then if they do end up rotating more to our right and then behind us, um, we're in a very bad spot. So that he should have bailed from this fight right off the rip. Even if he wins this fight, I firmly stand by that. I mean, come on, self self-explanatory right there. Picking fights you shouldn't pick. Now, when it was a duo, I was fine with him taking shots at the ATV, that's fine. But the moment the guy bailed off and the other guy drove around to get a better angle on us, that was a message to me that, holy shit, these guys somewhat know what they're doing because they're getting a wide flank. I need to get out of here. And then his, then a whole other ATV pulls up. Yeah, I'm bailing out. Sorry, brother. I'm not 1v4 today. No way. Not when they have better angle and positioning than I do. All right, so here we are about to push southeast. Of course, we got to think about circle rotation. And of course, again, we're just playing the edge of the circle, letting the gas push us out. And it looks like Grand Theft Auto is going on out here. There's cars everywhere, driving around, people shooting. I feel like I'm not even playing Warzone right now. But we need to focus on position. Don't worry about shooting these vehicles that are pretty far away. Um, I don't mind contesting vehicles, but because we only have SMGs and ARs and they're already driving away from us and they're pretty good distance behind, 
I'd be focused on getting position more than anything. <laughs> kind of drop myself some ammo real quick. No big deal. All right, and again, because we're thinking about position, because that's our focus, or it should be our focus, don't shoot at these guys. You guys need to get in a better position before you engage in fights, because what happens, you start shooting at these guys. Guess what? They're going to start shitting on you, right? There's going to be a guy here shooting at you. This guy's probably going to head glitch this. A dude might pop out of here. A guy might be on the bottom waiting for you guys to push. You don't want to engage this building because you're out of position. Eventually, we're going to have to move out across the opening, across the street, and get to this building. So why would you piss off these guys by shooting at them, guess what? If you down them, guess what's gonna happen? They're gonna get rezzed, right? You probably won't down them, but if you do down them, they're probably gonna get rezzed because they're behind cover. You down this guy, he's just gonna crawl to the corner and be safe. You down this guy, he's just gonna crawl behind it and be safe. So guys, again, pick your fights wisely and always choose positioning over fights and stop forcing fights when you need to be focused on positioning. All right, teammate went ahead and <laughs> Took a shot. Here we are. Another teammate taking a shot. Everyone's just taking shots. I don't see any hit more. Now we're just shooting everything. Screw it. Because it didn't have the commander foregrip on there. Notice all the side to side recoil. You did get the down, but again, the side to side recoil wasted a lot of bullets trying to get that down. A lot of bullets. Controlling your vert vertical recoil is way easier than controlling that horizontal. And here we are shooting the enemies again. Even if we would have broken his armor, even if we would have downed him, guess what? He would have crawled behind that roof, gotten rezzed. So let's talk about position and where to go to, because clearly these guys are probably going to die. Um, in this position, going to that blue building and contesting it is a good idea. Contesting these blue buildings takes a lot of practice and a lot of skill and a lot of know-how on how to out-rotate the enemy and use C4s and concussions and stick grenades and thermite to your advantage. Um, if you don't have that ability, then you would probably not want to push this build. And you want to get to it and use it as cover and then, and then, and then hop from building the building more to the southwest and get more centralized or on the other edge of the circle. If you're not comfortable with pushing these buildings, I always recommend practicing for sure. But if it's in game and you're looking like you're in a good position to win, you don't have to contest the building. You don't have to push it. So we did push up. Unfortunately, we're by ourselves. Our other three teammates rotated far right to get a better position, which I absolutely love. They did not like this position at all. So here we are now. Um, we should have grabbed this place. We don't have any plates. There's loot above you, brother. You can go grab it. I promise you'll be all right. Well, you probably won't. His teammates are probably going to be there. But guess what's going to happen? We either A, go up top and grab those plates and maybe get shot at or die by a guy in the hallway. Probably not going to be in the hallway. They're probably up top. Or B, they're going to look down and shoot us right in the skull. We're going to get shot from somebody else. So your best option in this position is get those plates and plate up. I do not, I do not like being in game with no plates. I don't like playing the game at all with no plates. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, you don't want to vault right. If he, if he was able to vault that, he would vault right to his death. There's loot above you, brother. You can go grab it. I promise you'll be all right. There's loot above you, brother. You can go grab it. I promise you'll be all right. <laughs> well, that's it. Get your plates, brother. I didn't mean just hard check the shit out of it. Look at this. You see this right here? You see this right here? We could have stood right here and grabbed everything. There's no reason to expose our body to that doorway. I didn't know there was going to be Claymore there. I, I'm not going to fault him for the Claymore hit. But again, you might want to assume there's someone in the hallway and there actually ended up being someone in the hallway, but you have to assume like he's holding that angle because his boy just died right there, right? So again, why would you put yourself vulnerable to getting hit by the claymore or getting shot by the enemy? Unfortunately for you, you died to one plate, but going for plates was the move. The way you went for plates, not the move, not the move. Teamwork is crucial. I know I'm pausing the video a lot, guys, but y'all love it, so we're going to keep doing it. Look, again, one at a time. Y'all dying one at a time. Teamwork is crucial. The moment three of you guys rotated to one side, Purple should have rotated with you. He shouldn't have contested this fight. He shouldn't have tried to fight these guys. Y'all should have planned in your head your rotation and then went the same way. Unfortunately, by the time they were rotating, we were already at the building, and at that, and at that point, it was too late. But again, we lost our life, and it was what it was. But Zaddy, Green, ended up coming in to try to help us, I think. Uh, and again, he's getting picked off one at a time. All right, actually blue and yellow bailed out. They, they realized this is a losing fight. We can't push this efficiently because we've already lost two teammates who decided to go solo dolo on us. And now we are in a position um, to get safe, kind of, right? We still have to cross a massive opening, but because of the bridge and because of a few things in the street, 
it is very possible to push across this somewhat safely. The chance of these guys coming around the corner is very slim. They still have building favor. They could still go to the top of the building, have a great line of sight on everybody, jump to the bridge, and be safe. Um, and that's exactly probably going to be the play, to be honest. They have a great spot. Someone just bought back at the buy station. Again, I'm glad they didn't go for it originally. Hopefully, they still don't go for it. 2v4 is not always fun, but it's highly probable. You just got to play it smart, play it slow. Slow down your gameplay, play a little bit more passive-aggressive, and pick fights as they come to you. Four enemy teams remain. Nine enemy players total. Now down to three and eight. There are people shooting at us from some direction. Could have been straight bullets, but here we have a guy on top. Very vulnerable. All we have to do is hit our shots and get the down. Unfortunately, if we would have downed him earlier and hit our shots, we could have probably got the execution. Um, but the chance of him getting res right now is slim to nothing. All right, let's look, at the, let's look at this. So there's a dot right here and dot right here. And our boy looks to the bridge. Why? I don't know. There's no arrow above this dot, which leaves me to believe he's in the middle of the street. Very easy kill. And we don't, we're not even looking over there. We're not even looking that direction. Pay attention to your mini map, especially when you hear gunshots. Oh, weird. Your teammate died to the guy that we just identified as being on the ground level. Again, pay attention to your mini map. He's still looking at the bridge. Pay attention to your mini map. I mean, look, your teammate did mark it and he did shoot at it. Fortunately, the ping was a little off. All right, good. All right, good beam. All right, all right, all right. All right. Oh no, oh no! <laughs> Yo, rip, bro, rip. Oh. Again, if he would have been paying attention to the mini map, he would have realized there are guys in this building in front of us. And of course, they're gonna have to be pushed out with the gas. What's gonna happen? They're gonna go to the rooftops and try to jump off. And that's exactly what happened. Then he ended up getting caught out. So now we're in a 2v2 situation or a 3v1, I don't know. All right, so now we're in a 3v1 and we're looking for an enemy. It looks like he's on the bridge, judging by the heartbeat sensor. And the bridge is a great spot. Yo, that bridge is a great spot. 1v3s, 1v4s is very hard to pull off. Very hard. But, but if you have the right positioning, it could be easy as cake. So what I would do in this position, if I was the guy on the roof, and I'm assuming he's on the roof and not the ground level, hopefully, um, is I wouldn't even peek. I wouldn't even peek the roof yet. Wait for these guys to have to leave and go in the open and then peek the roof and start taking them out one at a time. The roof's a great position because you can only just peek up and start shooting people one at a time and just beam them down. When it comes to angles and fighting, it's harder for ground level to shoot up at an enemy because of the way that cover works, right? Your entire your entire body is vulnerable from the ground. The guy up top, when he's looking at you, he can see your entire body for the most part. Unless you're behind cover, he can see your entire body. But the guy that's on the ground level, when he's looking up to you, he can only see your head because of the way the bridge works, right? Height advantage is always a great advantage. He's just rotating back and forth. They think he's on this building, but I know he's on the bridge, judging by the heartbeat. Oh, that weird. There he is. There's one. All right, brother. Come on, man. Get him going. We got Circle pushing the, the enemy team out. And this guy's got a beautiful, beautiful bridge. Now he's... This guy's playing smart. Yo, Onyx is playing smart. Instead of clustering up together, they're spreading out so they can shoot the enemy from both sides. So, unfortunately, I don't think Homeboy on the bridge is going to be able to win this. Execute him, execute him, execute him. Do it, do it, do it, do it. No! Oh, no! <laughs> but GG, I really hope you learned something valuable in this video today. This video is really going to be about teamwork because most of the teams we spectated were just filing in one at a time and getting picked off one at a time. You guys got to push together, not necessarily on each other's hips, but have somewhat of a flank organized and time correctly so you guys can challenge these other teams without getting picked off one at a time. That happened three different teams we spectated, unfortunately. But again, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel today. Join the Wolfpack. Also, leave a like on the video. Get this video to 1,000 likes. And follow me over on Facebook Gaming and join our Discord that's linked in the description below. You have a good one. Until next time, keep on improving. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you check out one of these two videos over here. And as always, subscribe by clicking the button right there. You have a good one. Until next time, good luck in Warzone.